Cup, Representative Bolden, Vegetative District 27. He's going to give us an update on legislative activities at the State Capitol. Representative Bolden, would you come up please? District 27. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am uh, excited to be here again um, for the second year. And for those of you who were here last year, I was a little under the weather then, but I am now back to 100% and, and, and excited to be here uh, on this great day. Uh, this is a this is a great conference. You know, the opportunity um, to learn so much uh, from so many of our champions in the community is always. Uh, a great thing. So, um, first and foremost, before I get started with my, my remarks, I just want to say thank you. And let's give yourselves a round of applause for being here. So, I, I want to talk a little bit about some legislation, but also give you a holistic picture of, of what we're talking about when we when we are diving into uh, conversations with regards to uh, African Americans in the disability community. Um, as of 2018, 5.6 million African Americans were living with disabilities in the United States. 3.4 million of which were working age African Americans with disabilities. With that, I want to reflect on the realities and the challenges that continue to shape the lives of African Americans with disabilities. Only 28% of working age African Americans with disabilities are employed in the U.S. compared to 72% of African Americans uh, without disabilities who are employed. This is in line with the rest of, of what we see in, in our country with regards to our disability community with fully one in five Americans having a disability and just 30% of those individuals working. When we look at our African American community, you know, 40% of African Americans with disabilities are living in poverty compared to 22% of African Americans without disabilities. So as you can imagine, you know, the challenges that already present themselves with living with disabilities, but the compounding challenges of living in poverty is a significant issue. And as policymakers, we have to not only look at policies uh, and, 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 and side, we can't look at them in silos, we have to look at policies holistically. Not only policies that are affecting working age individuals, policies that are affecting our disability communities, policies that are affecting uh, communities that have been historically uh, disadvantaged, we have to make sure we're looking at a holistic approach. I moved to Arizona 11 years ago to become a special education teacher. So, um, you know, education and, and, and disability community is something that's foundational to me and is very impactful. Uh, and, and it's something that I think that we have to continue to, to talk about. Uh, for many of the 1.1 million black students with disabilities in America today, the deck is stacked against them. Frequently, invisible disabilities such as ADHD are not diagnosed, and students don't get the supports they need to achieve. Frustrated, they act out and then become suspended. Now, African American students with disabilities are disproportionately impacted by suspensions in schools, with more than one in four boys with disabilities and nearly one in five girls of color with disabilities receiving and out of school suspension. That's why over the last two years, myself and a number of colleagues have introduced legislation to make sure that we are really looking at our school suspensions and making sure our focus is keeping our kids in school as opposed to pushing them out. The 2016 study by the National Survey of Children's Health showed a profounding statistic, and every single time I say this statistic, it's, it's breathtaking. 250 preschoolers were suspended or expelled every single day. Every single day. And as you can imagine, the majority of those students 
were students of color, students of African American students, and many of those students were students with disabilities. Overall, only 65% of students with disabilities graduate high school compared to 84% of students without. However, only 57% of black students with disabilities graduate. Studies show that when students miss days, either because of truancy or just being absent, that it's much more difficult for them to make it through school. And we know if our students are having a difficult opportunity making it through school, it makes it even more challenging for them to have those jobs that we talked about at the beginning of the speech, thus moving, removing themselves from poverty. Today, there are more than 750,000 people with disabilities behind bars in America. Many of them don't have high school diplomas and are functionally illiterate and are people of color. In Arizona, we have the fourth highest incarceration rate in the country. Primarily, many of these individuals are there for nonviolent drug offenses, an outlet used to medicate pain or depression or countless other issues that may be arise. But what's important to know is that there are policy makers at the state legislature fighting for policies every single day to change the dynamics of what we see. We're actually in a very unique place in the state legislature today. There's history actually being made every day. So right now in the Arizona House of Representatives, there are 60 members. Um, there are 31 Republicans and 29 Democrats. This is the closest that it's ever been since 1966, which is a great thing, because the public says that they don't want to talk about partisan issues, whether it's red or blue, Republican or Democrat. They want to talk about issues that matter to everyday people, that are going to solve solutions that we talked about today. That is a great thing. In our Arizona Senate, we have a very close Senate as well. There are 17 Republicans and 13 Democrats. So Arizona is much closer in numbers than many people perceive. And that means that issues that are affecting the African American community, affecting the disability community, will come to play and they will have the ability to change themselves into laws. There are many representatives that are fighting, some of which uh, belong to the disability community. Representative Jennifer Logan, uh, Lungden, a member of the disability community, is fighting uh, to make sure that uh, we are making sure that we are, the uh, disability community has a seat at the table when those issues are in play. Representative Kirsten Engel is fighting to make sure those criminal justice reform issues are, are fighting and they are moving closely and there is progress that is being made every single day. But to get to where we need, we know that it's a long path. We know that it's going to take more than just policy makers and organizations and advocates. It's going to take every single one of us collectively working together to make that happen. And I am optimistic in this room. I'm optimistic in the people who chose to be here to say that this issue matters to me. And I'm going to bring someone and I'm going to talk about the information that I learned here because that's the only way to change the climate of Arizona and change the climate of this country is if we talk about issues that matter most. So I'm going to leave on a, on a quote um, from uh, President Barack Obama. And, and before I give this quote, very, very short story. My very first job in politics was working for President Barack Obama. And, and the job was a very simple job. Um, I, I had a, a mentor by the name of James Johnson. And James Johnson, he invited me one day to a fundraiser in downtown Cincinnati, Ohio. And the fundraiser for, was for a guy named uh, Barack Obama. At the time, I didn't know who that was. I, I, you know, I, that was a weird name for a person. I thought it was, I, I didn't know. I was a piece of candy, so I don't know. But, uh, I remember going downtown into the hotel and riding up the escalator. It's a short guy, he was a staffer. And he said, are you Reginald? I said, yes. He says, come here, I want to show you what your volunteer assignment is. So I'm just walking with them, and I remember going into this room, 
And uh, it was uh, Mr. Obama there, so you know, I shook his hand. And at this point in time, still, he was a U.S. senator at the time, didn't know um, anything really about him. Um, but my job, uh, essentially, was to stand next to him and hold coats and purses <laughs> for donors that wanted to take pictures with him. So my very first job in politics was holding coats and purses, so you can start anywhere. <laughs> um, well, one, of his, one of the best quotes that he said, and, 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 it, and it really rings true, making your mark on the world is hard. If it were easy, everybody would do it, but it's not. It takes patience, it takes commitment, and it comes with plenty of failure along the way. And as long as we recognize that we're going to fail a million times more than we succeed, but that failure leads to success, and the things that we learn here will help us lead to success. So thank you so much, and thank you for having me.